Welcome to the week, ladies and gentlemen. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month, today I'm going to be joined via WebEx from Greenville, Georgia, from the print shop gallery that will be talking about artwork of our, one of our very own local artists. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for that very exciting interview coming up in just a moment. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. As we continue our series of Black History Month, I wanted to make sure that I definitely touched on people that have impacted our community, and we wanted to continue to focus on the arts. And today I am being joined by Mrs. Linda Glenn, Glenn Welburn from the Print Shop Gallery in Greenville, Georgia. Ms. Welburn, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Alton. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk about Annie Green today. Well, Ms. Wilburn, you know, Ms. Green is an icon here in our community. Um, and I, I was sharing with you uh, before we came on air that she was my seventh grade teacher and, and, and art teacher. And I, I must say, I'm ashamed that I can't even draw a stick man well, but there's nothing associated <laughs> with her because she is an outstanding artist. But Ms. Ms. Wilburn, before we get started today talking about uh, this remarkable lady, let me just ask you, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind, because this is your first time being on my show, City Week. Yes, glad to. Um, I, my husband and I <clears throat> moved down to Greenville from, from Atlanta, Georgia, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. um, and built a house back in the 80s, but we, I didn't start becoming interested in the local community at all until 1998 when I retired from working in Atlanta, and we made this full time. So. Uh -huh. um, but anyway, the... Uh, I opened Print Shop Gallery in 2011, and then in 2016 opened a second art gallery called Artisans on the Square, which is right on the other side of the courthouse. Both of these galleries are in downtown Greenville, right across from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And our motto these days is two galleries are making, are turning Greenville, Georgia into an art destination. <laughs> That's what we would love to see happen. And Annie Green has been a very, very big part of making that happen over here because she is such a draw. And uh, oh. our hours, we're open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 11 until 5. Okay. And right now we have her entire Once Upon a Time series hanging in Print Shop Gallery. What's left of Okay. There are, well, she started good. off with 40 a year ago, and there are 18 left now. Okay. So we, we her, they're very popular. Right. Let me, um, let, I want to jump in because I want to go back to what you said about the two galleries making an impact in Greenville, Georgia, and then we want to definitely want to talk about the, the paintings mm -hmm. that we see displayed there behind you. You two galleries there, uh, the Print Shop Gallery and Artisans on the Square. Um, and, and you're located there on LaGrange Street of all places there in, La, in, in uh, Greenville, correct? Yes. Okay, all right. And tell us your hours again, if you don't mind, Ms. Welburn. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 11 until 5. Okay, okay, all right, very good. And, and I'm going to ask the question because I know that there may be some viewers that want to come out. You're, uh, you're definitely practicing the CDC's uh, social guidelines, I would assume, correct? Yes. Okay, very good. Now, let me ask you, what, what drew you and your husband to the arts, if you don't mind me asking? Well, we were interested uh, primarily in redoing some of the older buildings that had been fallen into disrepair in downtown Greenville. Mm -hmm. And once we did the first one, which is Print Shop Gallery, I already had met a lot of artists in the area, so I thought, well, this would be a, a good thing to do for downtown Greenville. So we started out with nine artists and, and uh, you know, it's just grown over the years, mostly by uh, word of mouth. And then we started advertising. And uh, then we added the second gallery in 2016 when we redid the Hill Brothers building, uh, which was at that time when we bought the building, it was the worst looking building in downtown Greenville. <laughs> uh, we've made Hill Brothers We've made Hill Brothers into sort of an event where we have artists come in and 
and we'll feature one or two artists for like six or eight weeks at a time uh -huh. and then change that out. Oh, okay. All right. So not only were you, uh, you were interested in the arts, but you also were doing some renovation in the Greenville, uh, downtown Greenville area I hear there. Um, I want to, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you, how Miss Miss Annie Green, uh, when you mention the name Greens here in the community of LaGrange, everybody immediately know uh, Mrs. Annie Lucille Green and of course her husband Oliver Green and their children there. Uh, as I stated earlier, she's an icon here in our community. How did you meet Miss Green? I met her when we were both having tables over at the LaGrange Symphony Guild's annual um, my favorite things, which is their big fundraiser for the orchestra youth, mm -hmm. the youth orchestra. So I had met her and was immediately impressed with her, the, uh, you know, the uniqueness of her art. Uh -huh. So it was right after we had opened Artisans that I invited her to be a feature artist for, uh, I think we kept her for like two months during 2017. Uh -huh. And then uh, that was that was when she was showing the first Once Upon a Time series, and that series totally sold out. <laughs> so the one we have now is the second okay. uh, series that she just start. She started this, I think, just two years ago. Okay. But in the meantime, she finished uh, she finished her second book, What Color Is Water growing up black in a segregated South. <clears throat> so we were fortunate enough, we asked her, could we debut that book and also bring all of the paintings that went along with her first book, Georgia Farm Life in the 1940s. Uh -huh. Because the paintings that go along with her two books are not for sale. Those are our museum series, which travel. Okay. And we've, we've traveled, uh, what, what Color is Water, Growing Up Black in a Segregated South, first to our gallery and then over to LaGrange Art Museum, and then this past uh, January, February, for Art Hit for Black History Month 2020, mm -hmm. we took it down to Darien. Oh, okay. And that was right before COVID closed everything down, so it has not traveled since then. Mm -hmm. okay. But while we had it in Darien, they had the big crowds they had ever had come oh, wow. to the Macintosh Art Association okay. during that month. And so they were just thrilled that that was the best show they'd ever had. Well, great. That's awesome. And, and I know that her, her paintings bring out the community. And we talked about the Once Upon a Time series, What is the Color of Water? And, and you have a number of uh, paintings. I heard you open up by saying there were 40 paintings that were there on display, and, and, and fortunately, some of those have sold, and I think you still have about 22 uh, paintings that are still 22, on display. Yeah, 22 left, which are hanging behind me uh -huh. on this wall. Okay. Um, but the Once Upon a Time series are for sale. Okay. The, the Farm Life paintings and the What Color Is Water paintings are not for sale. Okay. They're for display only. Just display only. But we, okay. have, we, have, we have her both of her books. The, uh, this, is, this is the first book she wrote, which was Georgia Farm Life in the 40s. Uh -huh. um, she, had, she had done the series first. Okay. And uh, uh, Keith Rasmussen at the, at the LaGrange Museum traveled the series, the, the farm life series all over Georgia to different museums. And then she wrote the book to tell, because people were asking, you know, all the stories that go with each one of the paintings. Uh -huh. So she wrote the book. Okay. And then in 2018, she did another series of paintings and she wrote the book. Both of the books are very autobiographical. Okay. So if you really want to know Annie Green, get by both of the books because they do such a great job of telling about her life from growing up in high school georgia moving up to hogansville for her dad to have a better uh, principal job her mother and dad were both pre teachers mm -hmm. and her dad was a principal so they moved to hogansville then when she got out of school um, went to georgia uh, albany state college for her 
-hmm. undergraduate degree in art, and then came back to LaGrange and taught, started teaching. Uh -huh. And then later on, she and Oliver both were able to go to get graduate degrees in New York City. Um, uh, so they they got exposed to all of the art and culture and and that in in New York City. Uh -huh, very good. While they were getting that graduate degree, she she got a graduate degree from New York University, and Oliver Green, her husband, got a six year degree from Columbia That's University. Right. Absolutely. And you know, you 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 talked about the books, and I, and I have both of those books uh, that you just uh, showed the uh, viewing audience there. And you're you're exactly right. If you want to get to know Miss Annie Lucille Green, read the books there because they. Uh, give a depiction of her life growing up. And, and, and as you and I were talking uh, before we, we came on the air, you know, her, her art depicts her growing up in South Georgia. And, and I, I know that I had always wanted a piece of her art in my home. But it, with all the things that she did, basically was it kind of resonated to her growing up there. And then it was when I came to uh, the print shop gallery for opening of What is the Color of Water? Um, I saw a, a painting there of the art classroom and the light bulb went off like, there it is, because she was my seventh grade art teacher. So I now have, I commissioned her. So I have uh, a piece of her art hanging in my home as well. Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the paintings that we see behind you, Ms. Weldon. Um, I noticed that the, uh, as I look, your upper uh, right corner where we see the the people there in the creek uh, appear to be washing clothes. Talk about that one for us, if you don't mind. Yes, this is one of her series that, you know, people in in the country, a uh -huh. uh, lot, lot of people in the country didn't have indoor plumbing for a very, very long time, and some of them washed their clothes in the creeks. So this is a picture of people washing the clothes in the creeks. Okay, all right. And, and, and I noticed that some of the others there, but I know uh, we're going to do a pan of the full wall at the conclusion of the uh, interview. But another one of the uh, favorites, I think, that was pointing out was people took Saturday night baths in 10 tubs. Can you talk about that one for us? Yes, this, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> I, bought the, I bought the 10 tubs and from her first series. And then when we got her second series, the Ten Tubs was one of the first paintings that sold. Uh -huh. So it's very popular. What's, what strikes me, my mother grew up on a farm in North Carolina uh -huh. in the 30s. Really, she's older than Annie Green, so she was growing up in the 30s. But all of the stories that are told of Georgia farm life in the 30s are exactly like my mother's environment and the farm and so forth. They didn't have indoor plumbing until my mother was gone. Uh, had graduated from high school and left home. <laughs> they didn't. They were still without indoor plumbing. But she tells the stories of uh, they were they were a tobacco farm. But people would come. You know, Saturday night was bath time. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they put the tub out. They put heat the water on the stove. And I think they all had to share the water until I guess it got too dirty. <laughs> so they, That's right. <laughs> So that struck a near and dear chord to me because oh my, my mother had talked about the Saturday night baths. That's so. right. I, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, I can remember some of those uh, baths and tubs myself. I'm not quite that back in that generation, but I do remember those heating the water <laughs> on the stove and uh, others means. So definitely so. Um, and this one uh, really kind of captured my attention, too, because you, when you think about growing up in the South, being African-American uh, and then being able to own a car and not just a car, but a car with rumble seats and running boards uh, is one of uh, the other uh, paintings there uh, that you picked out as one of your favorites. Can you talk about that one for yes, us? That's a, that's a very popular one, too. We sold I think we sold the uh, we sold the one we sold everything out of the first <laughs> series, uh -huh. but the. Uh, you know, the rumble seats and all, the people who lived in the country would come in to, to the town uh -huh. on Saturday afternoon for their entertainment, to go to the movie or to do whatever, but they would ride around and they had the rumble seat and people could even ride on, holding on on the, uh, on the running boards. Uh -huh. 
to ride around. But Saturday afternoon was uh, was entertainment time. You didn't, you didn't have to work far. You came in for your town entertainment. Uh -huh. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I mean, and that was the, the highlight of the week to be able to, to come, to get dressed up, to come to town. And, and then when you had a car to be able to uh, chauffeur yourself around in, that probably was even uh, more so exciting. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and here's another one that I, I can definitely uh, can, can relate to. Uh, one people cooking over the wood stoves. I remember growing up in the country, uh, my mother had a little four hour eye burning wood stove and that's where we prepared the foods and we had the little warmers up top there where you would put your biscuits or whatever uh, that you had cooked. Um, so you have, uh, you all have one there. Also people cooked over wood stoves. Uh, talk about that one a little bit, much like the painting depicts here. But that's another one of my favorites, which I also bought out of the first series because I remember when I was a child and we would go visit my grandmother's house in North Carolina. At that time, she was still using a wood stove. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that, you know, everything I remember about going to my grandmother's farm and how much fun it was, it just reminded me so much of all that Annie Green talked about in what, you know, uh, Georgia farm life in the 40s uh -huh. because the farms were self-sufficient. They grew everything. They didn't go into town to buy anything uh, except for things that they didn't grow or make on the farm. That's right. And so it was it, the um, my my mother's farm and where she grew up on the in in the Raleigh Durham area of North Carolina was just so similar. So the family farm didn't change a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, over the generations or or throughout the geographic location it was I, I like to say that what made the family farm was was faith family and hard work yeah and that's what the glue that kept the farm family farm together unfortunately the family farm is no more mm -hmm. um, it high tech and big equipment and so forth sort of uh, took away the family farm, yeah, so it's yeah. it's a very nostalgic time for people who remember all the good things. Yeah. But of course, it was also hard, hard work. Yeah, I, <laughs> very hard. Work. I can I can remember <laughs> that when I can remember coming home as a, a small kid. Uh, we would get our homework, and then you would, once you got your homework, you had to go and in, go into the garden. And we grew right. uh, just about everything you could think of corn, peas, greens, tomatoes, all of it. Uh, we grew it there on the farm uh, uh, where I grew up out in the country myself. Well, I wanted, wanted to get one last one in because again, this one kind of resonates uh, with me as well as a young kid growing up out in the country. Uh, we had what the, we call the rolling stores that would come around through the communities and they brought various merchandise uh, to the families that lived out in the rural areas. Uh, talk about that one for us. No, I, I say that this was the predecessor to Amazon.com. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> people in the country had had the they brought the the whole store to them. Right. And, you know, stop just general merchandise and so forth, <laughs> so that you you didn't have to go in town for for everything. But maybe, mostly they were things like medicines and uh, you know general merchandise that people didn't were not able to to grow or make on their farms. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Absolutely. You know, I can even remember growing up, <clears throat> there was a, a gentleman that came around as a kid and he had just boxes of candy and my mom used to sell candy for him and then from what she sold, uh, you know, she got a cut from that. And I can remember like the the lemon bars, or the Chico sticks, I know I'm kind of telling my age here, but all those various things, the hard candies and things like that. So, you know, a lot of the uh, the paintings that you have and that you talked about were somewhat very nostalgic to me as well, uh, because I, having grown up in the country, uh, I know all of the, uh, all too well about the farm heart, like the hard farm life, uh, the baths and mm -hmm. the tub and the rolling stores and things of that nature. Let me ask you, Ms. Wilburn, uh, the uh, series there is on display. How long will it be on display? Uh, Annie Green is a permanent artist at Print Shop Gallery. Okay. She will be here as long as I can keep her. <laughs> okay. And I hope, 
I hope I make her happy with lots of sales so that she will stay here <laughs> forever. Okay. Well, very good. Yeah. Very good. But of course, the way these are going, the Once Upon a Time series will be sold out. And then uh, I don't know whether she'll start another one or not, but she just brought two new ones oh. uh, last week. So she is still making the yarn paintings. Mm -hmm. as, uh, and of course, during COVID, she's since she had to stay home, she made more than ever. Oh, my. OK. And, and you yes. know, and I know that most people realize, but you just made a, brought another point to, uh, that I want you to comment on. Her paintings are made uh, of yarn. Talk about that and the uniqueness oh, of it. Yes. yes. I'm Talk glad about you reminded me of that. If you look at our website, printshopgallery.com, mm -hmm. and go to the artist section and click on Annie Green, there's a biography of her. There's a pictures of every one of the ones that have been in the gallery, the ones that have sold. And there is a video of her making the yarn paintings, which when you look very closely, you can tell they're yarn. But until you see her demonstrate exactly how she does it, people are like, how does she, how does she do that? Uh -huh. So, <laughs> Uh, so go to printshopgallery.com and view the video. It's about, a, I think, a six-minute video, but okay. it shows step-by-step step how she draws the picture on, with a pencil, outlines it with black thread, coarse thread, and then fills in all the colors with knitting yarn. Uh -huh. Oh, my. Definitely an art, no doubt, and patience uh, to do what yeah, she then, has yeah, done. Yeah, a lot of people to do yarn art, but I have never seen anybody that can, can capture the history mm -hmm. in the yarn art the way she does, which is what makes it so fascinating, is she's both presenting a wonderful, rather unique art form, and also capturing a history, a time in history which doesn't exist anymore. So right. we learn about you know, particularly the younger generations, they have no clue what it's like to grow up on a farm, to raise right. your own vegetables. Everything came from a grocery store. That's right. It's a, I think it's a very, and, and also the same thing with the what color is water. It's a very important historical uh, presentation in paintings of what it was like to grow up as a black in a segregated South, and she does she does it so well. It's it's uh, told with uh, with color and humor. And most all of her paintings have a touch of humor That's in right. them. Uh -huh. so they, they make you happy. That's they right. all every time I look at an Annie Green, it makes me happy. Well, very good. And, you know, I think, you know, when you say that, that's what art does in a lot of cases. It really makes you think. Uh, it makes you happy, puts you in a, in, in a mood that you may not have uh, been in when you, before you started viewing it. Well, Ms. Wellman, I really want to thank you for taking the time to, to join me via WebEx today to make sure that we showcase a mover and shaker within not only within our LaGrange community that has resonated and, and moved over to the Greenville community with her outstanding yarn art. And we definitely want to, want to in, invite the uh, LaGrange, the Greenville, the surrounding areas to come out to the print shop gallery to view the, the remaining 22 uh, paintings that are there in the gallery. And hopefully she'll bring more over uh, to you when those are, 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 are sold. So Ms. Wellman, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. All right.